Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, J Dreaming. My name is Haley J Jones, and today we're going to be making crepes. Uh, I need to make 60 of them because we are going to Traverse City for a family vacation, uh, and I promised everyone a DIY crepe bar, like a dessert bar. Um, and so I don't want to make 60 crepes the day of. So what I'm going to do is pre-make them, put them on some parchment paper, transport them up, and then I will go ahead and just kind of reheat them and crisp them up in a pan uh, right before we eat. Okay, so I have made this recipe before just as like a treat for my husband. Um, I've never made it in this quantity, so fingers crossed. Um, but it is so stinking simple. Anyone can do it. If you've made pancakes before, you can make this recipe. All it is is flour, eggs, milk, water, and butter basically, and then a little bit of salt. And then I always like to do a tiny bit of sugar in mine as well, just for something sweet. Um, some people use vanilla. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and start putting the first batch together. Uh, and then I will kind of see how that goes and then maybe I'll do a double batch the second time and see how many I have at that point, I guess. Um, and then see about maybe getting two pans going if it's taking too long. I'm not really sure, but um, we're just gonna try our best. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is actually deviate from the recipe. Um, I was reading the original recipe and then someone had commented that it's a lot better to do like all of the wet ingredients in first and then um, sift in the flour. Instead, I think it calls for mixing the eggs and flour first and then all the wet ingredients and it makes it very lumpy. Um, so I'm gonna try it this way first. So I've got a big bowl here um, and I'm gonna do my flour first. So I'm just gonna set that over there. I don't have a sifter. So this is my sifter, it's a strainer. I have no idea if it's gonna do anything, but it's better to try, I think. Um, so I've got my flour here, and we need, let's see, one cup of flour. So we just wanna get our cup. Doesn't fit. <laughs> So I'm just gonna do it over my sifter or strainer so that way um, I don't make a huge mess. Um, and you don't pack your flour from what I understand. You pack your brown sugar, not your flour, not your um, like granulated sugar, anything like that. So, and then you kind of scrape it off so you can get your exact measurement. My grandma taught me that. All right, put that in there. And then we're gonna wait to, to sift that. Um, and we're going to mix our wet ingredients first. Um, mm, actually, I probably should do it this way. How much of you have come out? Not a lot. Let's throw that in there. Because we wanna sift into this bowl. So I guess use your smaller bowl for your flour. Okay. So in your larger bowl that you will eventually sift into, um, you're gonna wanna do your wet ingredients. So that's gonna be two eggs, um, half a cup of milk and half a cup of water. And I believe it's in no particular order. You crack eggs, but I don't. Um, okay. Let's see. Half cup of water. Then we want to do a half cup of milk. I gotta run and get that. Okay. Now we um, we drink almond milk in our household, but for uh, dessert crepes, I read that it was much better to use either whole milk or like a 2% um, because it tends to make them a little bit fluffier and not so rubbery. Um, so I'm gonna try it with this. I don't think anyone will mind either way, but I know that this recipe does work um, with almond, almond milk as well. I just wanna double check this. Ooh, that may be a little bit much. Maybe we'll leave a little bit out. We'll see. 
Okay, um, and then, let's see. Oh, we need two tablespoons of butter melted. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our two tablespoons of melted butter. I always just throw it in the microwave. Um, but then you want to give it a chance to kind of cool down because the last thing you want is adding like boiling hot butter to your um, eggs or your milk because it's going to make things cook because heat makes things cook. Um, so it doesn't have to be cold or anything, but I usually just kind of swirl it around, make sure that it's not, you know, super, super hot. And then we're going to pour that in there. Um, and then we're going to immediately start whisking and mix all of our wet ingredients first. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and sift my flour uh, in my strainer. Uh, so I'm kind of just gonna take this and just kind of shake it maybe. Yeah, that seems to work, I don't know. Um, and this could take a while, so I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so that's all done. So we're gonna go ahead and add just the last few dry ingredients to our flour mixture, um, which is just simply a little bit of sugar, which I don't measure it. I know I hate when people say like, oh, just sprinkle it in there, um, but I'll show you guys about how much I do. Um, and then you're just going to do one fourth teaspoon of salt. So let me find my little guy here. One fourth teaspoon. And you're not supposed to measure over your bowl, but I do. Okay, that looks good to me. All right, one fourth teaspoon of salt. And then, like I said, I just kind of sprinkle in a tiny bit of sugar. Um, so. Like that, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how much that was. I'm sorry, guys. If they need more sugar, just add more sugar. It's not going to be a big deal. Also, you're filling them with like Nutella and strawberries and, and peanut butter and bananas and those types of things. So really, so really, you're, uh, you're not going to need sugar in the batter, really. Okie dokie, so now that that's mixed up pretty well, we are going to go ahead and add it to our wet ingredients. Um, did you just make a noise? You? No? Okay. My husband's being a problem. Okay, um, so we're just going to add this gradually. Um, so just a little bit at a time. Let's say maybe half the dry ingredients really. Um, and then we're just going to whisk. And this batter is definitely going to be thinner. Um, so like if you've made pancakes before, like we were talking about, uh, it's definitely going to be much, much, much thinner than pancake batter um, because you don't really want crepes to fluff. You kind of want them to stay flatter, uh, but you really want to avoid them being like rubbery. Um, so that's where the heat comes in. Um, your crepes could be cooking too slow if they come out rubbery. Um, so maybe your heat is a little bit too low or you overmix them. That can be a big one too. Um, so it really is just trial and error. I feel like every time I make my crepes, they come out differently. Um, but that's okay because my husband is not picky and he eats anything I put on the table. So, All right, so this is about done. Let's go ahead and head over to our pan, which should be preheated to about medium high heat now. Um, I'm not going to oil my pan because I have a nonstick. Um, but if you don't, you can always just oil your pan with butter um, or like some canola oil spray. All that stuff is great. Okay, I feel like this is preheated. Um, the first crepe is a lot like the first pancake. It always kind of stinks. So um, the recipe recommends doing a one fourth cup um, scoop of each, like of the crepe mixture. Um, sometimes I just eyeball it. Sometimes I use the one fourth cup. This time I'll use the one fourth cup. Um, I also have a bigger pan over here, um, but I th think that I gravitate towards the smaller pan because it kind of creates a barrier for the crate. So you get that nice, like, perfect circle. 
I don't know. But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and dip in. And they don't have to be perfect, one fourths, obviously. Um, and you're just gonna wanna spread that around. And then, first thing you wanna do is pick up your pan and kind of twirl it. And so as it's cooking, it's really kind of um, spreading out. And then you wanna take a little rubber spatula like this one, or you can use the back of a spoon or anything like that. And you're just gonna wanna take it very, very gently because you really don't wanna rip your crepe. Um, but you just want to take it and spread out the thicker parts, the kind of, um, the parts that are still pooling with batter a little bit, and just spread them out and give them some love and make everything nice and even. Uh, and then we're going to leave that for two minutes, and then we will come back and flip it. All right, so we're going to check our crepe. Um, you can usually tell because the edges will start to come up off your pan a little bit, especially if you're using this size of pan. Um, but so all you're going to do is kind of push your spatula under, or you can use one like this. Um, uh, for flipping, I like to use the smaller one. Um, and so all you're gonna do is kind of flip it over, and it's perfect. Um, some people like softer crepes. I like mine to be a little bit harder, um, like crispier, so I like this part to get really brown. It almost resembles kind of like a um, tortilla shell, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this is perfect for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for maybe about 30 seconds more. This one you can kind of just peek and make sure that the sides match. Um, but about 30 seconds more for this. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and transfer it over to these parchment papers um, where we're just gonna let it cool. Uh, and then my plan for transportation is to put parchment paper in between each one because as they cool, uh, they do tend to stick together. Sometimes I make them um, like ahead of time for my husband to warm up throughout the week. Uh, and I usually put them in a Ziploc, uh, but sometimes they'll stick together. So I'm going to try the parchment paper. And then I just bought big like uh, Ziploc freezer bags that I'm going to try to get, I don't know, get them from point A to point B in there without getting smushed or cracked or something. Um, but yeah, so yep, this looks perfect. So I'm going to show you guys the other side too which is wonderful, and then all you do is set them right on there. I've got some parchment paper lined, and then also right here and over there because I'm making 60. Um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, I'll show you guys a couple more how I make them. If you have any questions at all, Google it because I don't know. <laughs> So crepes are really cool. You can do just about anything with them um, as far as like putting anything you want in them really. Um, so you can go like the savory route. I know a lot of people like to do like salmon, cream cheese, all of that kind of stuff. Um, we like to do cinnamon sugar and butter. That's huge in our family. Um, I like the more dessert crepes. So like strawberry, Nutella, uh, peanut butter and banana is really good. Marshmallows are a great ingredient. Put a little bit of ice cream on the side. That's wonderful. Um, but it really is just to each their own, however you want to do it. 
Um, that's why we're doing a DIY bar uh, because it really is so uh, personalized. You can make it exactly what you want. Hi guys. Um, okay, halfway. We have been at this for about an hour and a half. Um, and I've gone through three batches of batter. I have 32 crepes to show for it. Uh, so I need to make about 30 more. Um, my back hurts, but I told you 60 crepes. So I'm gonna do it. I'm back and it's a million years later and it's also 60 crepes later. Um, there's more over here. I'm not a cheater. Uh, I'm tired. I'm a little bit sweaty. Um, and I think the quality declined as the time increased. But I wanted to, before I close out this video, I wanted to show you how I was going to package them. Um, my dog is laying on my slipper right now. And it's the cutest thing in the world. But anyways, you guys aren't here for that. Um, okay, so crepe, wax paper, another wax paper, another crepe, and then what I'm gonna do is slide them in here. Now obviously I'll like pack a lot more. Um, and then I contemplated freezing them. I'm not going to because it's only one day. We're leaving tomorrow morning. It's only like a three hour drive. Um, but then so I'll just slide them in there. And then I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna transport them. But I think I'll just have them maybe sit on a seat so they don't get crumpled or wrinkled or anything like that. Um, but overall, I would definitely recommend this recipe. You can do so many fun things with it. Uh, we're going to do a DIY bar, so I'm going to try to film some of that too. Um, and maybe a couple like reviews. Um, but that's kind of all I've got for you. So also, I don't recommend making 60 at one time. That was terrible. But thanks for watching and let me know how your crepe experience goes. Bye, guys.